everyone. Today we are going to talk about multidimensional information therapy. We will look into the principles on which it was founded and why it works. We will cover the scope of the problems it is useful in resolving. How this therapy works is covered during classes and seminars. Multidimensional information therapy. What is it and where it came from? Let's look at the geography of Muggen Center. Multidimensional information therapy was invented by Valentina Kagansky, who currently resides and works in Israel. She is the head of International Center of Multidimensional Information Therapy. Valentina was born and raised in Russia. Her educational background is in engineering. She has healing abilities and been helping people for over 35 years. Her great desire was to teach people to help themselves. Valentina created information technologies. She transferred knowledge about the world, her healing abilities, universal laws, knowledge how to help people be healthy, harmonious, happy, successful, and wealthy into working algorithms easy to use by anyone who wants to learn it. Knowledge about the universe always existed, and everyone has potential to access it. Valentina's biggest contribution is development of technologies to neutralize negative information with help of positive programs or vibrations using simple algorithms. Everybody can learn it and get results. It is very simple to learn and use. The next center was opened in Philadelphia, Magen, USA. The head of this center is Jana Lerner. She is a born healer and has unique specialization. She does energy informational parametric health diagnostic and informational diagnostic of subconscious programs as well as work with informational deformations breaking our matrix. The third center was opened in California. Svetlana Shalikov is the head of this center. The first international conference of Magen Center was in California in 2011. Magen keeps growing. With Svetlana's support, several new centers opened up. They are in Washington, Michigan, Georgia, and Ukraine. These centers comprise of students who came to learn the Magen technologies, resolve their issues, and carry forward the knowledge offered by this system. Clients come to us with the following problems. First, health problems. When the body is hurting and or when the doctors don't have solution to the problem. Energy problems. Too tired to do anything, loss of energy, chronic fatigue. Emotional problems. You often lose your temper, negative subconscious programs such as fears, grudges, bad mood, Negative events in life is the next category. Similar negative events happening often or many different negative events happening at the same time. Next one is financial problems. Can make enough money or make enough money but cannot never keep them. They disappear like water. Also relationship problems with parents, children, friends, co-workers, bosses. As you see, the list is all inclusive. There are many instruments in Magen to help people on all of these levels. Why do people come to us seeking help with health problems? Our traditional medicine is wonderful, but it has certain limitations. Both traditional and alternative medicine have their own place in helping us to stay healthy. Let's look at some advantages and disadvantages of traditional medicine. What are some of the advantages of traditional medicine? One is system of algorithms. If somewhere was invented new procedure or surgery, you can get it in most hospitals. The doctor will be using the same algorithm to help you no matter where you live. Second, licensing. Any doctor you go to will have his license to practice medicine based on graduation from medical school and residency. We don't have that in alternative medicine. Next one is use of technology. Amazing inventions in medical technologies allow us to benefit by having various machines and instruments helpful in diagnostic and treatment of clients. Next one is ambulance. It's fast, efficient, available everywhere. 
The last one is surgical procedures. High quality, using latest technologies, minimally invasive when possible. If we have so many advantages, what are some of the weaker sides of traditional medicine? Corruption. High level of influence of insurance and pharmaceutical companies dictating the care the clients get. The attention is not on the needs of the clients and what is best for them, but on financial benefits of insurance and pharmaceutical companies. Dependent is next. We depend on existing algorithms created in the medical field. If a patient needs something different and there is no specific algorithm in existence for the issues at the current time, no medical options provided. Sometimes clients end up taking some medications for the rest of their lives or undergo more invasive procedures or send home hearing that doctors cannot do anything for them. Next one is limitation. Medicine is looking at people just as physical bodies separate from other essences. There are a very limited number of hospitals which utilize a more holistic approach such as paying attention to psychosomatic issues, energy balancing, or spiritual component of a person. A human being is a bioenergetic information system. What does it mean? Triangle, the all comprise of matter, energy, and information. Analogy with computer, metal, electricity, and programs. All three aspects must be present and together. Let's look at all three aspects in a human being and how they are connected. First, let's take a closer look at matter. Dr. Bruce Lipton, who is a cell biologist, in the beginning of his career studied how cells work, developed from the point of conception throughout their life cycle, and played active role in the study of removing nucleus from the cell. It is known that nucleus is the brain of the cell. It contains DNA and all information about the cell. When the nucleus was removed, the cell continued to live but could not reproduce. If you remove a brain in any living organism, that organism will die. Lipton went farther. He removed different systems of the cell. Cells resemble people. They have analog of nervous system, digestive system, circulatory system, lymphatic system, and others. And the cell continued to live. When did the cell die? It died immediately when the protein receptors were removed from its membrane, which means that functions of the cells are governed from the outside by central nervous system. During his next step, Lipton was interested to see how signals from central nervous system were affecting cells, how stress was affecting functioning of different cells. He discovered that when a person is under stress, the cells stop functioning normally and close down to stay in self-preservation mode. And when the person is relaxed, the cell function normally and regenerate. We have three nervous systems. Our central nervous system is responsible for functioning of our entire body, each system, organ, and working of every cell. Then there is our sympathetic nervous system, its stress reaction system. When we encounter stress, our body goes into fight or flight mode. And the last one, but not least, is parasympathetic nervous system. Once stress is gone, it helps us to relax and come back to normal state of being. How does our body decide when to get stressed out and when to stay calm? It gets that information from our brain. And where does the brain get that information? From our surroundings. We have our five senses with which we perceive the world. We have our eyes, nose, ears, mouth, and skin. These are our channels of getting the information. The information goes into our brain where it gets processed by our conscious and subconscious mind. Each one of us has our own perception of everything we encounter in life. It is based on the programs that we stored in our mind. Each one of us has our own programs. Our mind analyzes information that comes from the outside through our five senses and sets the signal into our nervous system where what is happening in life is stress or not. 
After that, the nervous system sends a signal to our cells to continue to regenerate or go into self-preservation mode. How does it look in real life? For example, two people are walking on the street and hear a barking dog. One of these people, let's name him John, was taught in childhood to fear dogs, and another, named Steve, was not. As soon as John heard the dog, his body received a stress signal. His sympathetic nervous system activated, and his body went into fight-or-flight mode. He turned his head to see where the sound is coming from, and saw that the dog is barking behind the fence. The danger is gone. His parasympathetic nervous system activates and helps him to get back into relaxation. While Steve walks calmly through this whole episode, barely notices the parking dog. Look what a difference in experience these two people have in relation to the same event. How we react to everything in our lives is our choice, which is based on the information stored in our mind. Our programs of the subconscious mind with which we perceive the world dictate to us what is stressful and what is not. And that information governs the functioning of our entire body. Can we change our perception? Absolutely. We teach that in our classes. We just saw that our physical well-being, functioning of each cell of our body, depends on the programs of our subconscious mind. And what we stored in our subconscious mind is unique for each person. The input we get from our surroundings gets analyzed by our mind based on our individual programs of the subconscious mind. And through our central nervous system, the signal is sent to each cell of our body how to react. Let's now look at the energy aspect of ourselves. In traditional Chinese medicine, the life force or the energy in our body is called qi. When we are calm and in a state of balance and harmony, the energy flows smoothly throughout our body. It can be symbolized by perfect balance of yin and yang. When we are under stress, the energy flow becomes interrupted in a certain area of the body, separating yin and yang, forming energy blocks, which in turn can lead to a disease process. Again, information that is stored in our subconscious mind is responsible how we perceive events in our lives and allow us to react either in stress mode or neutral state. As we saw with the example of barking dog and people reacting to it in different ways, the flow of energy in John's body, who is scared of dogs, was interrupted due to his stress reaction, possibly creating energy block. As we saw, both matter and energy of our body are governed by the information we stored in our subconscious mind. Most of us heard that information in itself is neutral. It is neither good nor bad. It is simply what it is. Is it good or bad that it's raining outside? Is it good or bad that someone is a vegetarian? Is it good or bad that someone lost a job? It is neither. It is all neutral. However, we live in the world of duality. So we are accustomed to think in terms of opposites. Day, night, white, black, life, death, good, evil. And this is often how we classify events in our lives. So, what can we do to keep our body and energy healthy and balance knowing that we store certain information in our mind? Let's look more deeply into the structure of a person. Now we will talk about seven bodies of a human being. First is our physical body. It's all cells, organs, system, and interaction of all organs and system. This is the simplest part of us. Other levels are more complex. Next level, energetic, our energy, feelings, and sensations are stored in our etheric body. Let's look at the example. Two people meet for the first time and one says, I know I cannot trust that person. It is intuitive feeling. The person senses different level of vibration in another person. It doesn't mean that either person is bad. It simply means that their vibrations are not harmonious in relation to each other. They are not in sync. It is usually very accurate information. Trust your sensations. If these two people will not trust that initial feeling and will start doing something together, they will have problems and it will not work for them. 
The next body is emotional body. This is the body of our emotions. Imagine that your bad mood is walking ahead of you. For example, you walk into the room, see backs of two people, and know that these people had a fight. You didn't hear anything, you didn't see their faces, but you feel anger in the air. You perceive the vibration from these people and energy lingering in the room with your emotional body. The next body is body of information. It's mental body, intellect. All our subconscious programs and information about a person contains in this body. The next body is our causal body. It's the body of events. Every event that ever happened to you was created in this body. You created those events, attracted them, and experienced them. Why are you responsible for all events in your life? Because in your information body, you specify what you attract and how and how you attract it into your life based on the programs of your subconscious mind. The next level is Buddhic body. It's our values. Everyone has their own values. For some it is family, for another children, for another work. Put your time into the things that matter to you, where your values are. Time is the resource you cannot bring back. Once it is gone, it is gone. The highest level is our spiritual body, it's our mission. It can also be called soul body. This is what we bring into the world as we enter it. It is our mission in this life. We came to fulfill this mission in this lifetime. And now let's see why people get sick. Just follow that red arrow. In the beginning, we let go of our mission. Oftentimes, we simply don't remember what it is. After that, we violate our values. For example, we may value time and spending time with family, but instead we stay at work for 12 hours per day, and when we get home, we are too tired to pay attention to our family. When we let go of our values, something that is really important to us, we start to experience negative events. When we start experiencing negative events, we can ask the following questions. What am I doing wrong? How should I change to get back into my values? How do I attract these events into my life? Or we can ask other questions such as, How can they do it to me? Or why God is punishing me? Once we start blaming others and universe for our problems, we go into our mental body generating negative thought forms. We begin to form negative opinions about the world and people in it. And we begin to see negative events as punishment rather than hint to change things in our lives and take responsibility. It leads farther to emotional upset. We start feeling tired and without energy and eventually it leads to physical illness. When can we correct such progressions of illness? At any point. As long as we are alive, we have a chance to change things. Is it possible to heal a person on one of these levels? Not really. This is why traditional medicine falls short on complete healing. Even if all the symptoms are gone, we have a hole in our non-physical body and it can continue to influence our body. To receive complete healing, the work needs to be done on all seven bodies, and we teach that in our classes. When we are born, each of us has a specific to us matrix of health. This is information about our absolute health for this lifetime. It includes our physical, psychological, and karmic well-being. Our subconscious mind is main instrument in determining how healthy we are at each moment. It asks our body, how are you, at each moment in time. Our body gives back the information, I'm okay, all is normal. In turn, our subconscious mind compares this information with our matrix of health to see if this information is accurate and true. Sometimes the signal from the body is that something is wrong. At that moment, our subconscious mind sends help to that part of the body. Why do we get sick so often? Because under stress, our cells cannot regenerate. What do healers do? They help the body communicate with the subconscious mind and allow a person to come back to his matrix of health.
What is the ecological and karmic matrix? Vadim Zenland described our world as a mirror. We are at the center of that mirror, and the mirror reflects back everything we send there. We send our vibrations into the universe and receive back exactly what we send. When we are born, we are pretty harmonious. We have the rays like kindness, love, self-esteem. All is well, all is in order. A child is like a sunshine, with all rays open and shining. About 60 programs of subconscious mind that we encounter when we do our informational diagnostic of subconscious programs. As we go through life, we encounter negative events. Some of them lead us to close some of these rays. For example, we witness the fight and stop respecting one or both of the people. We stop sending respect into the universe and we stop receiving it into our life. We can only receive the vibrations we send. The respect goes away from our life. We stop sending kindness and we stop seeing it in our life. Our experience of the world is based on the programs we have in our subconscious mind. We will experience deficiency in the areas of life where the rays are closed. Can we reopen this race to restore our personal universe? Absolutely. By rewriting the negative programs of our subconscious mind into positive, we will change ourselves, our vibrations. As we change, the world around us will change as well. How do we create negative programs of our subconscious mind? Age before seven years old. Our life scenario is formed by the age seven. Child's mind is like a recorder. It records everything the child encounters without much filters and with minimum logic. Children mostly function in the alpha level of consciousness. The door to subconscious mind is open. Once the programs are created, they are sealed in our mind by age seven and they influence our present, future and far away future. They are shaping and forming events in our lives. The programs become stronger throughout our lifetime. Not only that, but each one program creates a new negative event. As a result of that new negative event, our program becomes stronger and that new event creates a new strand of negative events which in turn negatively impact our life. We teach algorithms to correct such programs during our seminar, Problem Free Life. Each one of us consists of millions of cells. Each cell has a specific function, and all cells are equally important. Our physical body is a community of cells. There are cells of organs, bones, muscles, brain cells, and each cell has its own function, lifespan, vibration, and regeneration ability. All cells interact with each other, and our mood, programs of the subconscious mind, beliefs about the world, influence our cells and their ability to work. A person is one cell of the universe. What is going on with each one of us has impact not only within our mini world, but spreads into the world. Just as our health depends on the proper functioning of our cells, condition in which the world is depends on the well-being of each one of us. We are all cells of the world. We shouldn't compare people with each other. Each one of us has our mission and we strive to its fulfillment. If a person steps away from fulfilling his functions, people around have to compensate for that. What if the self forgets that it is part of a greater whole and starts functioning as an independent organism getting its nourishment from the neighborhood cells? This is how cancer works in a human body. When a person, cell of the universe, abandons its mission, it will begin self-destruction path leading to death. Why? Because it is no longer useful for the organism. Each one of us is mini-universe and we attract people to ourselves based on similarity in our vibrations. If we are kind, we will see kind people around us. If we are angry, there will be angry people around us. If our vibrations are positive and harmonious, people around us will be just like that. If we are not, people around us will be of different type, whom we can call teachers. We have similar people around us or teachers. 
People who are more like us will stay with us for a long time. The teachers will go away once we learn the lesson. Or the relationship with that person will change to more congruent once the lesson is learned. If you have someone in your life causing a lot of negative emotions, you can ask a few questions of yourself, such as, why did that, get, why did that person appear in my life? What can I change in myself that causing this situation? What is the lesson I need to learn? The only way to change our world is to change ourselves, our matrix, our vibrations. Vadim Zeland first came up with the idea of pendulums and egregors. What is egregor? This is a build-up of energy in the universe carrying information about specific topic. This energy forms as a result of a large number of people subscribing to that idea. The more people are putting in their energy into that concept, the stronger that egregor becomes. What are the examples of egregors? Religions, political parties, raw food movements. Egregors can be positive, neutral, and negative. If we have low energy vibration in our life, like fear or guilt or hatred, we are not in a harmony, such a Gregor can influence us to worsen our condition and increase negativity. While passing us, such a Gregor, which we also can call a thought form or collective group mind, an autonomous psychic entity made up of and influences thousands of thoughts of groups of people, will connect with us and carry us with it. We are tuning into that negative energy and it grows in our life. I see it as clouds in the sky. Imagine your low energy vibration is sent into the universe as a dark cloud and it attracts similar dark clouds. And now instead of just one dark cloud, you have a conglomerate of dark clouds above you which giving you a lot more negative energy. Let's say a person has a fear of flying. As long as a person has this fear, they see and hear information about plane crashes everywhere. They turn on TV and there is a news about plane crash. They open up internet and there is information on emergency landing the airplane had to make. They meet other people who are afraid of flying. Their fear is constantly feeding and becomes stronger. What can you do to change it? Get rid of your fear. Correct that vibration in your life. Internet has information about everything good, neutral and bad. It is our responsibility what we choose to get from the Internet. We can find information how to plant flowers or cook tasty meal, or we can search for the information how to kill or look at child porn. It is our choice. We protect our computer with a firewall, so no one can enter without our permission. So when our children are watching cartoons, we feel safe enough to know that they will not encounter porn during their cartoon time. Just like the Internet, the universe offers us information about everything existing in it. We can tune into positive or negative information. We can also attract it based on our vibrations. We do not have a natural firewall protecting us from negative information. One thing that we teach at our seminars is to create a shield, more than one, to protect us from negative information coming into our bodies and being stored in our cells. These shields can be used not only for ourselves, but our loved ones as well. There are many universal laws. Uh, there are consequences for violating this law, even if you didn't know such laws existed. Let's take a look at some of these laws. Number one, the law of attraction. We attract into our life what we are based on, our vibration. Sort of like a magnet. Next one is the law of harmony. Everything has to be in balance. If you place people, priorities, things in your life too high, give them too much importance, you may lose them. It is our idealizations. Or if they are too low, it creates absence of balance. In our center, we do diagnostic of programs of our subconscious mind, which shows where your values on things are too high and too low and we teach you and help you to balance them. The goal of information therapy is harmonization of a person within himself and the world around him. 
The next law is the law of giving and receiving. We first give and then receive back. Uh, do you owe anybody anything? Not really. You can choose to do certain things in life, for example, washing dishes, take out garbage, cooking. Why do you do those things? So we can live in a clean house, eat tasty meals, and eat from clean dishes. If you think of all of your responsibilities as gifts to your loved ones, instead of owe and must do, you will experience shift in energy. You give with pleasure. When you owe something, it is always a loss of energy. The next law is the law of mirror reflection. You send into the universe something and receive back the same thing. The most important law is the law of free will of a person. Human will and mind are untouchable. Everyone has the right to make their own choices, reach their own success, make their own mistakes. Everyone has their own mission and came to learn their own lessons. We have no right to interfere and tell other people what to do. Even if these people are our family members and close to us, if we do, it will affect our karmic matrix. The line between good and evil can be drawn based on this law of free will. If someone knocked on your door and you allow them to come, they are your guests. If they broke the door to come without your permission, it is violation of your free will. Making love when two people love each other is great. Having sex when one disagrees is rape. Who heard such word as an evil eye, curse, hex, possession, and bond? Yes, these things exist, and we talk about them in detail during the seminar. We can call them informational deformations. It doesn't matter how you call them. In two-dimensional world, it would look like this. Our mirror, a mirror of our universe, was damaged from the outside by external force and became crooked. When we look into a crooked mirror, our reflection changes. It doesn't show us as we really are. We said earlier that our universe is a mirror and we are at the center and it reflects back what we send. Now when the mirror is crooked, we send perfect love, confidence, respect, but receive back something different. It is not because we are doing something wrong, but because the mirror is bent. It is not important to us who damaged our mirror. What important is why we attracted that damage to us. Let's take a look at the analogy. You have entered the bus and there wasn't sneezing there. Tomorrow you started to sneeze. Who in the bus is guilty that you started sneezing and picked up the illness? A man sitting there, a woman, a child? No one. You need to strengthen your immune system and you will stay healthy. The same thing here. When the person is harmonious, nothing will cling to them. If a person has informational deformation, it needs to be removed and his universe will be restored. Otherwise, you will continue changing yourself, but the deformation will not allow your vibration to return as you send them into the universe, and your life and your world will not become harmonious. In such state, no matter what you do, you will not be able to get the result that you expect. We live in the world of duality. The concept of good and evil exists in our universe. We came to this world not only to fulfill our mission, but to understand where we are in relation to good and evil. Where is there a line between them? At each point in time, which power do we feed one or the other? Our thoughts and our words are energy, they are vibrations. With each one, we serve either good or evil. Well-being of our world at each moment of time depends on the choices we make to serve good or evil. The balance of good and evil in the world is constantly changing depending on the choices each one of us makes. At Center Magin we have main seminars which carry with them informational technologies and therapy. There are also trainings, workshops, distance learning and handouts. Please go to our website for more information and schedule our events. Our web address is www.magin-usa.com. 
Our main seminars are Your Health is in Your Hands, Problem Free Life, Breaking Crooked Mirrors, Metamorphosis of Life, Parents and Kids, Money, Your Reality and Your Possibilities, and Being the One Who Can. Let's talk a little bit about the first three seminars. In general, seminars are divided into three groups. First three are basic seminars for daily use in life. They are related to health, life events, programs of the subconscious mind, and relationships. It really helps each one of us to know and use daily all that information that provided in those seminars. The second group is more complex and they are based on the first group of seminars. They are also concerned with specific subjects that may be needed by some but not others. Metamorphosis of life, this is about life scenario. Seminar parents and kids, the name says it all. And money, reality and your, responsibility, your possibility, this is a seminar about financial prosperity and financial universal loss. And the most advanced seminar, being the one who can, is for students who took all previous seminars and has practiced the skills. This seminar is about identifying your true goals and desires and getting the tools to achieve them. Now let's look into informational technologies. Why do we call it informational technologies? Imagine a very complex machine. There is a way to turn it on and off. There are safety rules, how to operate it, and there is a diagram on how it is made inside. A worker at the factory is using this machine. He has no idea what's inside the machine and why and how it works. All he knows is how to turn it on, put metal tube inside, press a button, and receive a nut on the other side. An engineer is the person who knows how this machine works, but for the workers this information is not necessary. The worker knows how to do several specific steps to get results. One, two, three results. Similar is happening in information technologies. During our seminars, we are learning how to diagnose negative programs, negative vibrations stored on all, on all levels of our being. We are learning to create positive correctional programs and using these programs to neutralize negative signals stored in our matrix. So we take several simple specific steps to achieve the results. One, two, three result. Valentina Kagansky developed specific algorithms that have been taught in our centers for many years and thousands of people came and learned them. Everyone can learn this simple technology. We will talk during the seminar about the things behind these technologies. And regardless of your level of understanding of the whole process, of all the intricacies of universal connections and interplay, you will learn to do several simple steps to achieve results. You will learn to find negative vibration causing you bad moods, illness. You will marker them and correct them with positive vibrations you will create during the seminar. One, two, three results. The technologies are open to all to learn. You can work with us on many different levels of your interest. You can study, develop, and teach. We also have some trainings. Difficult children, what to do? My emotions are not me. Time management. Story days of perfecting your mind, body, and characters. Why do we offer trainings? These are very specific, related to concrete subject. They are based on the principles we teach during our seminars and on universal laws. They are a lot simpler than the seminars and allow a person to start making changes based on psychology and other more everyday like methods. You can get more detailed information about these trainings on our website. Let's take a look at the services of Center Magin. Our services include parametric health diagnostic. This is diagnostic of your health, which takes into account unity and wholeness of your entire organism rather than looking into separate organs. Diagnostic of subconscious program. The main purpose of this diagnostic is to teach people to understand themselves, their place in the world, 
and the creation of inner harmony. It looks into the programs of our subconscious mind and helps us understand why we have problems in certain areas of our life. Restoring the physical body. It is an individualized system of restoration that will be developed specifically for your needs considering your personal uniqueness based on the results of one or both diagnostics. It may include but not limited to removal of toxins from the organism, removal or reduction of stress, which will make it possible to remove excess muscle tension, restoration of the vitamin-mineral balance, and restoration of energy and strength. There is also double modalities. It is a combination of energy informational technology and craniosacral therapy. Energy informational corrections. Combinations of magnetic technology, double, and other techniques to restore health and harmony in person's life. There are also individual sessions and private consultations. Let's look once more into the picture of Unified Information Network. Each one of us has a file with all our personal information in their Akashi file. There is information about our past, present, future, and about possible development of events for our destiny in the future. This information can be taken or read by infotherapist only with the permission of a client. Infotherapist access this information in order to do diagnostics and corrections. If you give permission for a therapist to access this information, they will go through you to get to that information. The information will come back directly to them. If a client doesn't give permission, we will not access this information. We abide by the law of free will and will not violate it. We are interested to keep our karma healthy. When we are talking about the seminar, Your Health is in Your Hands, we are talking about working with these three levels physical body, etheric body, and emotions. We will touch just a bit on the mental field and the field of events. We will learn how to clean our week from effects of negative influences for self and our loved ones. We will also look into foundation of information therapy. We will learn to diagnose negative programs, mark them, and correct them with positive vibrations we will create during the seminar. We will create protection programs from negative information. We will learn to work with time lens and study visualization work. You can register for the seminar through Healing and Within website or by calling or emailing me. Please contact me if you have any questions or need additional information. Mm -hmm.